Hello, I'm Dr. Ruthie, a sexuality educator and a relationship coach over at exploringintimacy.com. Thanks to the great folks at funwares.com, I'm here answering your questions on sex and relationships. And you know, speaking of funwares, I was talking with my friend over there, and you know, we were both noticing that this seems to be a time of year when a lot of relationships come to an end. Blame it on February, which is a notoriously bad time for depression and all sorts of unhappy things. Blame it on Valentine's Day when a surprising number of people suddenly realize they're not necessarily that happy with their romance. Um, but it just seems to be a hard time of year in relationships. So as a service to you, I'm here to give you my top six tips on how to know that it might very well be time to break up with your sweetheart. How to know when it's over. My first tip to you is to give it a little test just to make sure. And what I mean by that is nothing sneaky. In fact, something that could make your relationship better if you should stay in it. And that is to simply spend more time together. And by together, I mean spend more time really close together, physically close together, sitting next to each other, butt cheek to butt cheek on the couch while you're watching TV, making sure that you're holding hands when you go places, and just keeping your proximity very near. Some research shows us that that kind of physical proximity will make you like each other more if you like each other and hate each other worse if you hate each other. So that can be a great way to test whether your relationship is meant to continue or not. How are you feeling in your gut? Is it that you just need more time together to build those wonderful hormones and brain chemicals that make us like each other? Or is it just going to drive a bigger wedge? In which case, it will get easier for both of you to break up. So that's tip number one. Try spending more time together and see whether it helps or hurts after, you know, a few weeks, a month or two. Don't, don't just try it for a day. Um, my second tip to you is to check and see whether it feels like the same old problems keep getting worse. So you're having the same old problems, the same arguments over and over again. And some studies show us that that's kind of what couples do. We have the same fights repeatedly. What matters for the well-being of the relationship is how we handle those repeated fights. Now, if I say this to you and you think of your last fight, you think, oh my God, that fight is going to happen over and over again. You're right. It has been. I cannot sign up for this. It's just getting worse and worse the way we handle that problem. Well, that's a bad sign, my friend, because it's probably not going to go away. Um, if you're thinking that and you're like, well, you know, I've been bored, it's been stale, but the way we handle our fights really isn't so bad, those problems that keep recurring. Well, maybe this is a relationship that you want to invest more time in and what you need to do is, is work on the stale, boring problem instead of necessarily just breaking up. And spending more time together can help with that. So keep an eye on, do the same old problems keep getting worse and worse? My third tip to you is, are there unequal commitment levels between the two of you? Does one of you, maybe even you, have a foot out the door? Um, not spending enough time with each other to maintain the relationship? Is somebody, you know, just feeling like they don't have the same commitment level as the other? No judgment. Um, but that can mean that, you know, both people are in different levels of readiness for the relationship. Have you communicated how ready you are and how does your partner respond to that? If it doesn't go well and you two remain in very different levels of commitment to the relationship, then this probably wasn't meant to be. My fourth tip for you then is if you don't see the other person in your future, you only see who you wish they were or who you wish the what you wish the relationship was. So when you think about your future, you, you don't see them in there at all, or you see this glorified image of what you once had or who they once were to you, but it's not really accurate of who they are in your life now and who they've been for the last little while. This is a sure sign that you either need to commit yourselves to working things out or the relationship might be ready to transition out. So um, my number four was you don't see them in your future, only what you wish they were or who you wish they were to you. Tip number five, it feels like it would just be easier if they weren't around. And that is a sure sign that part of us is getting ready to move on. Now these may be problems you want to address with each other, but it's definitely increasing the risk that the relationship is done. You think to yourself, gosh, this day, all of these things 
would just be a lot simpler if the other person wasn't around. And that's also a sign that you're kind of looking ahead into the future of, of not having them there as well. Or it could mean that there are major issues, you know, substances, bad ways of communication, you know, just a poor match between the two of you, perhaps. And um, the energy distribution isn't equal. One of you is giving a lot more and the other is taking a lot more and it's just not been balanced. The last suggestion for you, number six, is ask your friends for their honest advice. Their really, really honest advice. The friends who know you best. Studies show that our friends are more accurate judges of who we're attracted to and who is best for us than we are. But we don't like to take their word for it. Ask around. Do whatever is necessary to get folks to be honest with you. This, uh, you know, isn't a guarantee that they'll be right or that you'll get the best answer, but you may get some really interesting insight that validates what you knew all along or gives you a little piece of truth that you had never admitted to yourself or hadn't noticed before. So let's go through the tips, one through six, one more time, how to know when it is over, Dr. Ruthie's top six tips. Number one, try spending more time together. Does it help or does it hurt the situation? Number two, the same old problems keep on getting worse, especially the fights you have about resolving them. Number three, there's unequal commitment levels between the two of you. Number four, you don't see them in your future, only your idealized notion of who they are or who they were or what you wish they could be in your life. Number five, it would just be easier without them. And finally, number six, you've asked your friends for their honest opinion and they're not so much seeing the two of you together. So um, spring is coming along and, you know, this is maybe the time when people are thinking, I want to be fresh and free for spring. I either need this relationship whipped into shape or I need to let it go and find something else that's better for me as the days start getting longer and warmer. Um, there's lots of different ways to break up with a partner. There's also lots of different ways to try and make it work. Sometimes it's not as simple as breaking up. You have a lot invested together, whatever the case may be. Don't hesitate to take your relationship to a good helping professional and like mental health and relationship expert to help you out. They know you. I don't. I'm just a YouTube video, so I could very much be wrong, but sometimes it's helpful to have these little buzzes in your ear. I'm Dr. Ruthie. I hope that this video helps you to find a more peaceful, happy place wherever it may be in your relationships. And I will see you in my next video. Thanks.